or record keeping. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, the entrance of your word brings light. We are a prophetic generation. We have an apostolic mandate and a prophetic calling upon our life as a church, Lord, as an ecclesia of Jesus Christ. You have called us to be equipped in this place, to be strengthened, to come to the fullness of Christ, to walk in the fullness of the life that God has given us, to take over everything the enemy has stolen, O oh Lord. Lord, you have called us to be a kingdom of priests and kings. And for such a reason, we are here in this time, Lord, to save a generation, not just this generation, but for generations to come. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you, Lord, that we are the remnant that are going to stand before you, King of glory. And Lord, and usher in, O oh Lord, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ upon this earth. The glory of the Lord to spread to the farthest corners of the earth. Lord, we submit and surrender. Lord, we are ready and prepared for the final move of God upon the face of this earth, O oh Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I believe that we are in a time when the church is about to go through a transformation. We have seen several moves of God over generations. But I believe that we are at the cusp of a change and a transformation that is about to happen. Amen. And there are many things that I want to share but I believe that we are getting there. We are getting there little by little. If you look at church history, it, charged, it started at the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured up upon the group of believers who waited in the upper room. Right? They waited in the upper room. So what happened when the Holy Spirit came? Those who were there were filled with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit came upon them and he gave them abilities beyond human capacity. So these people who were filled with the Holy Spirit went out with the word of God and Peter preached that day and many gave their life to Jesus. The same Peter who denied Christ and ran away and, and, and was the same Peter that God used to preach the gospel that day. He gave the first mass crusade message with faith and the bible says that their hearts were turned that it caught it, it they, 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 many gave their life to jesus and many were uh, joined to the church amen hallelujah and then we see the church fathers coming so first it was the apostles the the disciples of jesus who are now the apostles of christ not all the disciples of jesus we see uh in the bible okay we see mainly peter john yeah, and uh, Peter and John mainly we see. We see other apostles, uh, disciples coming. But we see the apostleship of Peter mainly as the leader of the church, right? And then we see 90% of the Old Testament. Who do we see? Who do we see? Writing 90% of the... Who wrote 90% of the New Testament? Paul, Apostle Paul. Right? Apostle Paul wrote 90% of the New Testament. Other people wrote as well, but they were not canonized into the Bible. Okay? What was relevant, what was needed was included into the New Testament, New Covenant. Are you with me? Because Paul had an encounter with Jesus, such encounters that his encounters were much greater than those disciples being with Jesus physically. It was as if that Paul had face-to-face -face encounters. He, he, he had seen Jesus. He had been to the heavenly realms where he saw the realities of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He saw such realities in the realm of the spirit that he was able to, able to download them from heaven and write them into human languages that we now read as the word of God. Such was the anointing, such was the power with which God used Apostle Paul. Amen. He was called to be an apostle of the Lord Jesus 
Christ. Amen. And he gave such profound teachings. Where did he get those teachings from? Imagine Paul never had a Bible. Okay. Paul never had a Bible. He only had the Old Testament. He only had the Torah. You only had the Old Covenant and the Prophets. The Law and the Prophets. He never had Bible. He never had the complete Bible that we have today. But what he had was encounters with the Holy Spirit and God told him, you will suffer for my sake. Amen? You will suffer for my sake. That was his ministry. That ministry was a ministry of suffering where God was downloading things into him and he lived in a time where the church went through utter persecution. You cannot imagine that persecution today. The type of persecution that the church was going through at that time was a, was a type of persecution that no one had ever seen. Hallelujah. It was the birthing of the church. Amen. It was the birthing of the church. And there was a lot of bloodshed. There was a lot of bloodshed. There was things that happened that were that we can't talk about. You, you, you see the war happening now in the Middle East. All the atrocities that are happening. They are nothing compared to what happened in AD 70. Worse, it was worse. What we're seeing now is nothing compared to what happened in 70 AD. What the Romans did. Yeah. So because there was a prophetic call for the church to be birthed out of that place see uh, let me explain something to you satan has access to certain level of knowledge okay he has access to certain level of knowledge not everything he doesn't have revelation he doesn't have rhema he cannot know the heart and the mind of god okay but he understands certain principles in the realms are you with me? He understands certain what principles, how things work in the realm of the spirit. He studies. He's a student. He, see, the, the thing is, see, Satan is a very good student. He's a very good student. He learns. He grows in his capacities by learning. How do I know this? I will come to it. Now, in the garden, Adam and Eve were created by God. They were created in the image of God. They were created in the likeness of God and the earth man was taken out of the ground and God breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. He became a living being, a living soul. He was a soul. Yeah? He had a body through which he could access the, the earthly realm and he had a spirit through which he could access and be in the heavenlies. Are you with me? The body was not the main part of man. Man was a living soul. Which means he had the capacity to have intellect, emotions and will. And he was placed in a garden called Eden. So Eden means an atmosphere. Presence. We imagine in our mind a green lush garden with many trees from which he ate. Adam didn't live in a garden that we imagine right now. He didn't live in that type of a garden. Are you with me? Adam and Eve were placed upon the face of this earth in a presence, in an atmosphere where they do not have this body. Are you with me? They did not have this body. Because this body is a naked body. This body is a naked body. Not because you are not wearing clothes. <laughs> because when Adam fell, God told him, Where are you? Adam said, For I am what? I am naked. My capacities and my abilities I have lost. 
everything that God gave him, he lost in the moment. He ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Which means Adam lost his original state. He lost his what? Original state. So he felt naked. Imagine Superman. Hmm? Felt naked when he lost all his powers. So Lex Luthor could come and take that kryptonite and control him. Correct? You have seen that movie? You see? <laughs> so you are like Superman. Right? You can do things. You can go to the heavens. You can be on earth. You are given powers over the, the enemy. You are being given capacities to, to rule in dominion. You are like Superman. Adam was like Superman. But the moment he ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, every power that God gave him, he lost. So when, you, when Superman loses his power, he's fully clothed, right? But he feels naked. He feels helpless. Yeah? You feel helpless when you have lost your original state. Hallelujah. So man was a living soul and had the capacity to grow in knowledge, in understanding. Because spirit, spirit part of you, can only grow through knowledge, what Robin mentioned today. Spirit part of you cannot grow any other way. Amen? The more knowledge you access, the more your capacity increases in your spirit. My people perish for lack of, of what? Knowledge. The lack of knowledge. Knowledge is the ultimate food for your soul and for your spirit. Without knowledge, you cannot advance in your spiritual growth. Amen? Without knowledge, you cannot grow in power, in authority, and in dominion, in your domain that God has given you. Amen? You can't just come and say, I'm born again, so you know what? God has given me all things, so I'm going to do. No. How many Christians I've seen, they're not able to defeat demons. I, I, I've seen, when I was growing up, in my school where I was ministering, we had just started a, a small Bible study group and we were growing. And within months, we began to grow. The Lord said to me to pray, so we began to pray. So as with any ministry, challenges came. And one of the challenges was, so we were training the people, we were training them, and there were two girls. And I told them, we told them specifically, grow, continue to grow. And so they became, you know, they began to grow. And suddenly they became very proud. They thought they knew everything. <laughs> So what they did, now even me at that time, I didn't know much. But I knew that I need to stay under a covering. <laughs> they went to a place to cast out demons. Now, <laughs> when they went, they said, no, no, no. Listen, we also have authority. We also have Jesus, so we can cast out demons. But what later on I, I knew was they were living in sin. Okay. So when they went to cast out that demon in that family, that demon, he said, hey, there's a dry land, jumped into these two. They jumped into these two. I'm in my friend's house that afternoon. I'm receiving a call from one of the girls. I said, why are they calling me? I asked them not to go. Why are they calling? She, she called, screaming, shouting. I said, what happened? Oh, Brother Sam. So they call me brother then. Oh, brother Sam, Brother Sam, da, 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 shouting, screaming. I said, what happened? We went to pray, we went to pray, and this is what I said. I said, where are you? She said, we are in this state. I said, okay, I have a friend there who is a pastor. Go there now. So they went to that place. They went to that church. And this one was already not oppression. It had become possession. <laughs> so they went to that place. And even that person there could not help them. 
So they sent them back. So they somehow they put them in a train. They bring them back to my state. They brought them back to the university. And when they came to the university, their state was so bad. They were fully possessed now. <laughs> so <laughs> for, for the first time, in, I've seen my grandmother cast out demons. See, I grew up with that. You know, I grew up where my, the maids will come. And suddenly, in the time of worship, they'll begin to manifest demons. And my grandmother, hey, shut up in the name of Jesus. Get out. <laughs> I've seen that growing up. So for me, it's very normal. So I saw that. I was like, I was like wow, this thing is, is real. It's real. So for me, I know it's real. Um, then they took them to this church. See, at that time, I did not have the knowledge. I seen, I did not have the knowledge yet. So I did not dare cast them out. You see, God said, don't, don't. I said, okay, I'll just watch. I'll just watch. So when they took them to this church, in that church, the pastor, his wife, his son, the daughter, all four of them came, casting out the demon morning to evening. <laughs> the demon is not leaving. It's just getting worse. It got so worse. I saw, I saw things that I should not have seen. They took a Bible and started hitting them with the head. I said, what type of nonsense is this? That's not Christianity. I saw things. They're beating them with a stick. To, I said, what? This type of religious things they do in the village. I, I looked at it. I said, That's not authority. That's not power. And from that moment on, I purposed in my heart to study the word of God and grow in understanding. I said, Lord, raise me up to be a prophet who will cast out demons in Jesus' name. Who will break the chains of, 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 of demonic oppression on people in Jesus' name. Help me and give me the spirit of discernment that when I go to a nation, I will see what demons are working, what the enemy is doing, that I will stand as a power and the authority come from God to cast out devils. But you know what? It did not happen right away. It took years. It took time before I came in contact the first time the Lord released me to cast out demons, I was so excited. I said, Lord, thank you. I am so excited. Lord, I've been training for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. I said, Lord, I want to grow in understanding. See, the disciples were able to cast out demons because they understood the principles why which the, 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 the devil works. The problem is, believers, we don't know how the devil works. You see, we don't even know how the Holy Spirit works. So there are things that we need to be informed about so that we are more than conquerors. See, you can't just become more than conqueror without knowledge. You can't be ignorant and be a victor. It is knowledge of God. It is the knowledge through the Word of God. It is the knowledge that the Holy Spirit gives you that gives you the power. The, author, the Bible says the righteous are as what as bold as a lion. When you spend time with the Holy Spirit, something shifts inside of you. You know how the how the spirit realm works. You know how the spirit realm works. Hallelujah. You know the dealings of God in the realm of the spirit. And that incident. It, uh, even though it was very hard for me to watch, I was helpless. I was just watching there. I said, how, how will these people be helped? Then I begin to understand how that, that the enemy can be deceiving. Okay? Now, that was demon possession. Okay? That was demon possession. It doesn't happen easily. It happens when a person just opens up their spirit. That is when they lose their mind, when there is a complete takeover of a spirit, of the human spirit, okay? So their mind, their body, their spirit are overtaken. So they have their consciousness. So when you come across someone with who is completely possessed, you'll, you'll notice that they are normal for some time. But suddenly they can do some things that are not normal. Okay, so that's the complete possession part of it. Then there are different levels. 
It starts with influence, okay, and then it moves on to oppression. And from oppression, when they keep opening more and more and more and more doors, what happens is there are many doorways, okay? See, there are many doorways that can be opened up into your life that can allow the influence of evil spirits, okay? We are meant to rule over them, correct? We are meant to rule over them. But we are not able to rule over them because they seem to have more knowledge than you. Is that right? So spirits, they have knowledge. The spirits have knowledge. So how do I know that Satan increased in knowledge? How do I know Satan increased in knowledge? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter number 11. Second Corinthians chapter number 11. Okay. <clears throat> For such are false prophets, apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of, of Christ. So there are apostles of Christ who are false, correct? In this world, in the church, there are, there are a lot of them. How do you recognize them? By their fruits, exactly. How do you recognize a false apostle? By their fruit. Okay? You have to do a character study huh, of people to understand if they are true or false. If they are pointing you towards Christ or towards themselves. How do you know a spirit is of God? As a Christian, you are all being trained to pray now. Right? So when you pray, when you grow in the spirit, okay, you will come in contact with spirits. How do you know that the, the spirit that you are coming in contact with is the Holy Spirit? How do you know? You should know this from the Bible. I am asking you a, gen, a real question. How do you know? Huh? Yeah, how do you know a certain spirit is the Holy Spirit? Huh? What is the ca first characteristic? What does Jesus tell about the Holy Spirit? When He, the Holy Spirit comes, what will He do? He lead you to truth. He is the spirit of Truth. Okay. What is the second one? These are all the things you should know. He's a spirit of truth. What's the second thing? He, what's the <coughs> spirit of truth? But the first thing he does, he points towards Jesus. He does not speak of himself, but he will speak of Christ. The first thing the Holy Spirit does, he'll point you towards Christ. The spirit of Antichrist point you away from Christ. There is a sense of godliness, but they will never point you towards Christ. You will not, in, in that place, they will speak of great mysteries, but you will not grow spiritually. Amen. If you are in a church and you see the pastor prospering and prospering and everybody else is poor and, 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 and not prospering and having breakthrough, there is something wrong. If you are genuinely Attached to the vine in that church and you're under the ministration and you're growing in the spirit, you must also have breakthroughs in your life. Amen. You must also, you must feel the joy of the Lord fill your life. You're not just sitting there thinking, oh, what is the pastor talking about? Hallelujah. It's not just the leadership. Everybody who's coming under the ministration, under the umbrella, under the tree must bear, must bear fruit. Amen. That is a sign of a healthy church. Amen. That's why in our church we focus on the word of God, on teaching, on prayer. So when a, when a baby Christian comes, these are all things, oh, uh, you teach for one hour. Oh, you pray for one hour. 
Look, when I first started the church, I didn't, I didn't force anyone to pray for more than 15-20 minutes. Now, if you want to be a leader in this church, you come and you have to pray for one hour at least on Saturday. <laughs> at least. So I, I went easy. See, because when I was a minister, full-time minister in the Philippines, I, three hours was minimum that I need to pray every day. Minimum, I need to pray three hours in the presence of God. That was a standard I set for myself. Hallelujah. If you want to grow in the things of God, you need to pay the price. Amen. The only place that you don't pay price is for your salvation. Everything else you need to spend time with God and you need to grow. We are meant to grow. We are not meant to die and go to heaven. We are meant to bear fruit. We are meant to take care of the things that God has given us. We have taken this grace thing too far. We have taken this grace thing too far. See, grace is important. It's a, grace is an elementary teaching of Christ, correct? We need to understand grace. Grace was important for us when you were a child and you were discouraged and you felt like, oh, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. Grace helped you to realize that you are the righteousness of God. Grace enabled you to live above and beyond sin. But to ascend into the things of God, you need more than grace. Hallelujah. I give grace to a young child when he's falling over. But when the young child begins to grow and he continues to make the same mistake over and over, it's not a mistake, it's deliberate. Are you with me? It's become a habit. So what we have done, we've taken this grace thing too far. When people live and say, hey, it's grace. God's grace is there. That's why people are weak. That's why churches, are, uh, the, 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 the church, you see sort of church, they, they grow wide and big. Why? Because there is no accountability for growth. They, I'll be just a face in the crowd and I'll leave. I don't want that. I'd rather be 50 people strong, 100 people strong, and raise you up to be an army for God. Hallelujah. This, this method takes time. Because this is not an easy the spiritual boot camp is not easy. Because now, uh, if I take you to the realities in the spiritual realm, what happens in that place? Why people are being perished, you will, you will weep. You will see how, what the enemy has done to kill, steal, and destroy people's lives. We need to grow so that we are equipped with the word of God, equipped with the spirit of God, to face things in the realm of the spirit, to face things in the world. We are not called to warm the pews in church. Amen. So when you are growing and when you are growing in the spirit, you will come in contact in the realm of the spirit, in the heavenlies. There are different spirits, not just the Holy Spirit, right? Correct? There are demonic spirits, there are evil spirits, there are different spirits. You will come in contact. The first way that you can know that spirit of God is the Holy Spirit is that he will point you to Christ. He is the spirit of truth. Amen. He will remind you of what Jesus has spoken. Amen. And he will teach you. He is the spirit of, his spirit will teach you and he will lead you to the things of God and the will of God will be revealed to you. One more and the most and another thing that you will have when the Holy Spirit gives you an instruction is you will have peace and you will never have confusion. Amen. A lot of people, when they are spiritually growing, they will come and tell me, God told me. I know it's not from God. I will just smile. Pastor Sam, God told me that this is the girl I must marry. I said, really? Go pray. Many times people come and tell me, Pastor Sam, God told me this is the person. It's not that. It's not that. Uh, uh, they, they, they are not spiritual. Where are they coming from? Emotions. They have not yet learned to bring their emotions under the subjection of the Holy Spirit. So, when their emotions are butterflies, oh, Holy Spirit. You see? So, what happens? They will say things like, Pastor Sam, God told me. They were very strong. God told me. But I instantly will know it's not God. Because I will not feel the peace. 
but I will not discourage. Oh, really? Okay. You know what I will say? Go and fast and pray. So they will go fast and pray. What is God saying? What they will say, I will say, give me scripture. They will not be able to give me scripture. They will not be able to tell me something in line with the word of God. Then I know it's not from God. Because everything that you tell me, the reasons you give me, must be in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. This is why I want to do this. This is why I want to get married. This is why I want to do such and such and such and such and such. The principles of God. I want to follow the principles of God. I want to follow this. I am, I'm called by God. This is who God, you know, the, the, the words they speak will give peace. Hallelujah. Then I will be like, did you pray? Yes. And they tell me, why is this girl the one you think is your wife? They'll give me emotional reasons. I'm very attracted to her. She's very pretty. Hello. Hallelujah. God did not give you a sexual partner. God gave you a helpmate. Hallelujah. When that is the main focus, uh, hey, forget it. It's not from God. It is from God when you soon realize that this is the one that I'm meant to be with to advance in the kingdom. I'll be like, okay, now you're talking. Does it mean the pleasures? No, no, it's a God pleasure. Pleasure and this, that God created it. It's part of it, but it's a bonus, not the main. It's a dessert. Not the main food. <laughs> Even that's the main food. When that goes dry, you will say, no, this is not the one for me. The next one. They will. Where your heart is, there your... That's where your treasure is. Set your mind on things that are above. Not the things that are below. When I met my wife... I saw purpose, I saw ministry, I saw helpmates, I saw, I wept. I went, God to me, I wept because I saw the heart that she carried for people. People will come and tell me stuff like, she's so pretty, you're so lucky. I said, shut up. <laughs> is that what you can see? Yes, she is, so what? What I see is beyond physical beauty. We need to be able to see that. That's when you know you are led by the Spirit of God. Oh, you're so lucky. I said, I'm, I'm blessed because of the nations that I will go to because of this woman. Am I attracted to her physically? Yes. 100%. Beyond you know. But that's not my focus. Are you with me? Are you, are, are you understanding what I'm saying, church? See what the enemy has done. He, he, he has shifted our focus. So when the, the passions in a marriage, they, they go, uh, no, I don't feel like anymore. It's not the one. That's not the one that will sustain you. It is the purposes of God in a relationship. Oh, uh, why are you going to church? I'm going to church because, because, because I feel good. No. You go to church because you know that's what God called you. Hallelujah. So even when problems come, even when messy things happen, you know God it's not a perfect place. But you God call me here, Lord. I'm here, Lord. Lord, Lord, it's, it's not a big place. It's not a big church. But I see a big vision. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, 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 I align my spirit with the vision of the church of the pastor. I'm going to stay faithful to that vision. God, this is why you have called me here. Such are the people who will begin to come and will begin to pray and will begin to grow. Hallelujah. The church is full of flaky people. What God is looking for in these final days are people who are led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Led by the Spirit of God. Some people came and asked me, and when I gave them instruction, after a few months, the, guy, the person came and told me, Pastor, this is my answer. I said, that's not the girl for you. And the person wept. <laughs> oh God, why not? I said, wait. I said, wait. At the right moment, things will fall into place when you're led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Not all the time. Sometimes you come and say, I'm like, yes, that's the will of God. Go for it. Amen. Because there is a peace that surpasses all understanding that will come to your heart when the Holy Spirit is at work. 
Amen? So you need to grow in your spiritual capacity. So you grow in knowledge, you grow in your discernment, and you understand the things of God. You, you, get, you understand how the Holy Spirit works. Amen? So the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. It will be in line with Christ. It will be in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. So don't make decisions without prayer and Bible. Okay? When, especially when you are growing in the spirit, spend time in prayer, a lot of prayer. Then wherever you go mistake, the Holy Spirit will come and correct you. And you will be like, ah, oh, conviction. You will feel conviction. Conviction is when you, oh. Yes, yes, yes. Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you'll make those changes. And Holy Spirit will not come and whack your face. He will, he, he will gently, He will gently correct you. He's not a spirit of religion. It is a spirit of, He's a tender spirit. He's a gentle spirit. Amen? He'll come with that gentleness, that patience, that kindness. And a still small voice you will hear in your spirit. When you begin to hear the still small voice, you know you are being led by the Spirit of God. When there is a rush into something, it's not from God. When somebody forces you to invest something, run away from that place. Anytime you want to get something and you felt like, if you don't buy today, you'll lose it. You tell them, please, I'll come tomorrow. <laughs> that tactic doesn't work with, your, with, you, with you. Amen? Don't be rushed. The Holy Spirit does not rush you. When you walk with God, what God has for you will be manifested in Kairos time. You need to stay in the Spirit. Learn to wait upon God in the Word of God. Develop that patience. Hallelujah. Right now, your situation may be that you are thinking, Lord, why is my situation so hard? You are even finding it hard to, 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 to do certain things. But when you stay in the Spirit, somebody might just come and say, you know what? My house is empty and I don't want to give it for rent. Please take it. Are you with me? You are struggling to pay mortgage, but there is going to come a time when you will pay it off in Jesus' name. Something can happen if you just stay in the presence of God. Because the enemy will keep you distracted with the struggles of the world. But when you stay in the presence of God and in the guidance of the Holy Spirit, things can happen in such a way that you will begin to, you will become the owner of the place. Hallelujah. But you need to learn to dwell in the secret place of the most high... <coughs> dwell in the secret place. Okay? For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 14. What does verse 14 say? And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of so in Genesis, he was what? A serpent. Right? He was a serpent who deceived Eve. He was a creature created and he was in the garden. We see the serpents. But we see that this guy has graduated. Into an angel of light. What is light? What is light? Knowledge. Okay? When we say, when God says in the, in the book of Genesis, let there be light, he is releasing knowledge. Now, I want you to understand. In the book of Genesis, we see darkness. The whole earth was covered in darkness. God doesn't remove the darkness. But what does he do? He takes light out of, from the darkness, in the midst of darkness, he says, let there be light. And there was day and then night, a greater light to rule the, and a lesser light to rule the 
it's more than just sun and moon you have to understand okay these are thrones these are powers in the realm of the spirit they are more than just sun and moon okay so when the book of genesis talks about the fish of the sea the birds of the air i told you they are not talking about the tuna fish and the sharks they are not talking about the parrots and the eagles right there are powers in the air there are powers under the sea there are powers on the land we call them territorial spirits there are demonic powers of the air in the air waves that's why in the book of ephesians the bible calls satan the prince of the power of the air the bible calls him the god of this world has blinded the people from the gospel are you with me how did he gain control over the power of the air how did he gain control through adam through adam he he he, he took adam was the gateway for him to gain control okay because who god gave adam power and authority over all the birds of the air all the fish of the sea everything that creeps over the land correct which means god gave him authority over all these powers you with me satan came deceived adam adam fell satan became the god of this world he became the prince of the power of the air whoever controls these powers controls nations You 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 think Hamas and Iran are doing things you're wrong there are powers that influence there is no point going and fighting lgbtq don't worry there's no point going and holding banners and saying you'll go. stop it christians should sh- stop those things there are powers that influence the generation Oh, this is a weighty subject. It takes a lot for me to share this. So, <clears throat> how many of you are still with me? Don't think somebody just woke up that day and decided to be a terrorist. No, 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 no. There was a power at work in his life. But who was controlling that power? The prince of the power. So who is that power's prince? How does Satan gain influence over that power? Because Adam. Who, see, what did God say? I have given you dominion over the things of the earth, things in the sea, things in the air. And God separated the firmament from the waters. from the waters above the firmament so which means there are waters above the firmament and there are waters below the firmament correct and he separated the land from the water and he called the dry land land and the waters he called them sea so when jesus went on that boat watch this what did he rebuke correct but he told the water to be still he rebuked the storm the spirits behind that marine <laughs> location was the thing that was causing the storm but the waters were created by god so he told be still what is be still so the waters were being influenced by <laughs> are you understanding me you understanding me yeah so people don't just go to the waters and just die accidents don't just happen on the roads by accident no 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 the devil comes to kill steal and so if we are here we have to pray against every accident on land on water and by air If you check the news, how did the terrorists come into Israel? By land, by water, and by air. 
Hallelujah. So they, 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 you, you, you think, you, you, you see the armies of the world, water, land, and air. If you see occults, they talk about land, f- water, air, fire, all these things. They, they, are, they, they, they bring this, they, say they call it elements. We don't work with elements. We rule over elements. Hallelujah. The only fire that I work with is the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the baptism of fire. Which gives me authority and dominion over the elements. Say this to me, I have power and authority over elements. So when people don't have the Holy Spirit, they have to go work with the elements. Crystals. Oh, come somebody. Hey, where did they get the crystals from? From the ground. They think it's just crystal. But behind those crystals, what is there? <laughs> so you are supposed to be walking on top of the spirit. You are supposed to be walking in dominion, correct? But when you bring these artifacts into your life, you say, this will protect me. What's, what are they doing? They're giving in under the subjection of that power. Yeah. So, so, so I'm very careful what I wear. What I bring into my house. I don't bring any artifacts. As I'll, I'll check. The Bible says, test every spirit. Test every spirit. Man, praise the Lord. There, there was a time where I used to agree with people saying, if you're a Christian, you can, you can you know, wear tattoo because tattoos were the Old Testament. But God spoke to me. When I began to grow in the spirit, God specifically told me, no, you're not allowed to. Because I almost got one with a cross saying faith or something like that. <laughs> but, well, look, if you've gotten in the past, don't worry. If you have gotten in the past, don't worry. You are cleansed and forgiven and, and all, all that past is gone in Jesus' name. See, it's according to your conviction, this one, okay? Some people believe if anything you do outside of faith is sin. At that time, you thought it was right, it is fine. Okay, I'm not teaching this as a theology. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not teaching this as a theology. This is not Bible. This is my personal instruction from God. I almost got one last year. Okay, I'm just speaking to you. God told me no. You understand? He told me no. I asked him why. He gave me a glimpse of it. So I just know I'm not supposed to get. Yeah. I just thought it was cool. <laughs> you, you see? So when I began to grow in the things of God, certain things, God said, no. So I listened and said, okay, God, I won't. Okay? So I, I'm not teaching this as a theology, okay? This is my personal thing with God. Okay. Now, so that's just a brief thing to teach you how people come under the, the powers of the air, the water, the winds, all these things. Okay? That's why Jesus walked on the water. To take authority. Amen? Take authority. Now, that's why Jesus was able to calm the waters by speaking to the waters and rebuking the storm. Alright. So Satan, he came as a deceiver and then the Bible says he has transformed himself into an angel of light. Which means... He has now gained a certain level of knowledge. Are you with me? He has gained a certain level of knowledge, but he does not have revelation. He does not have rhema, but he has knowledge. He knows the Bible. He can quote the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. Okay? He quoted the Bible to Jesus. Okay? But he did not speak life. Okay, just because somebody quotes the Bible does not mean they speak life. You can't, so if you can't quote the Bible to Satan, you can't quote it and win over him. That word must become flesh in your life. When you speak, he knows whether you're speaking from authority or knowledge that is puffed up. Are you with me? Don't just grow in knowledge that puffs up. Grow in the knowledge of God. 
the epignosis of God, the revelations of God. Hallelujah. When you spend time, there are two things that I cannot overemphasize. That is the reading of the Bible and praying in tongues. You do that every day, you will find something shift in your spirit. You will not be able to explain them in human language. You will not be able to explain them in human language. English is, is far less, is, is, is very inferior language to describe the things of the Spirit. <laughs> That's why Paul used Hebrew, uh, no, sorry, Greek. So Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic were languages that had depth. That's how Bible is written in that. When the Bible was translated to Latin, it was watered down. Then English, even more. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not saying that English, if you read Bible in English, you will not understand everything. You can. You can, but the problem. Yes. Those things only the Holy Spirit can teach you. Okay? So, what I would suggest and highly recommend is before you read the Bible, pray in the Spirit. Charge your spirit with the Holy Ghost. Amen? What you do, come to your prayer room and say, Lord, I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to sp read Scripture. Let the Scriptures be transformed into the living Word of God. Hallelujah. As I read it, Lord, let me go into the depths of scripture let me go into the depths of your heart and speak to me holy spirit la so kakatuti inanto begin to groan in the spirit pray in the spirit for half an hour and after half an hour you will feel something shift and charge in your spirit and begin to read and when you read don't read with your mind because if you read with your mind it will not benefit you get it into your spirit locate your spirit within you. See, most people don't know how to locate their spirit. So they read things in their mind. They deal with the things of God with their mind. You can't operate like that. But, Pastor, how can I locate my spirit? Let me put it very simply for you so I'm not speaking in parables. The more you spend time with God, the more your spirit man will grow. The more your spirit man will grow, the more evident the substance will become in your spirit. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So you can't see with your physical eyes. Then what happens when you... Faith cometh by hearing the word of God. The first thing that you will grow when you read the Bible is you will grow in faith. The evidence will be seen in your reactions, in your responses to the things of the world. Hallelujah! When you have a dream, you will, what does the dream mean? But now you will have interpretation for the dream. Hallelujah. You speak in tongues and you will be able to interpret the tongues. You used to feel, oh, I'm, I'm speaking in tongues. Am I speaking gibberish? That, that fear will go away. That is a lie of the enemy. Many Christians don't speak in tongues because they're like, what am I doing? What am I doing? You kill that lie. Destroy that lie in the name of Jesus. The only way you can learn a language is if you speak it and practice it. Practice speaking in tongues. Oh, oh, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to blaspheme. Hey, you don't understand. You can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit like that. You can't. The Holy Spirit knows when you're growing, at first you might just be speaking, ka ba 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 is okay, just speaking that. Is A B C D of tongues. Then you will get one or two words. Neko zigeta boshata. Oh, wow, new words are coming out. Nemo si kato ka lik o saprotoko di e kato si. Oh, new words are coming out. 
And then you'll form sentences, paragraphs, and then you'll begin to decode things in the spirit. And then is when you go into an intercession mode. When you go into intercession mode, the Holy Spirit will bring a prayer point into your spirit and he will say, pray for this, pray for this, pray for this. And you begin to pray. And when you begin to pray more and more and more, you'll come to a realm where you're not just praying, you're groaning in the spirit. Your groan your groanings becomes prayer. Your groanings becomes decoding in the realm of the spirit. You're dethroning the satans and the powers of the land. When I began to pray, the Lord showed me 10 demonic spirits in this land. Are you with me? The Lord, uh, when I, 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 look, a few weeks ago, I told you, right? I saw the demonic spirit that is a principality over the Asia Pacific. The Lord opened my eyes to see the principality that's the ruler, that's the ruler that is ruling over this land, the ruler that is responsible for all the things that are happening in this nation. And the Lord said to me, this is the thing. Now, I'm not going to take, 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 take on him yet, you see, because I'm growing in what? In authority. <laughs> because I'm going to deal with all the little demons in Boronia first. Amen. The territorial spirits. God is opening my eyes to see these things. Sir. And then, and then, God opened my eyes to see these things. And then, I took this little notebook of mine. In 2020, I wrote down the prophecy that my spiritual father gave me. And it began to line with the vision that God began to show me recently. Are you with me? Where, I'm not going to read the whole thing. He said to me that he saw me surrounded by 10 wicked spirits. And I saw you beating down the force. I saw God walking through you and in you. And I saw God's grace lifting you up. And the word of the Lord came to my spirit as reflected in Ezekiel chapter 37. And I saw the hand of the Lord lift me up. And his hand is going to lift you up above the natural in Australia. The hand of the Lord is going to lift you up above what? The natural. So in the natural, we'll see things. But when we begin to pray, we realize those naturals are a, a reflection and an outcome of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. Are you with me? You say, oh, my, dif my situation is difficult. Lord, how do I do it? Get into your place of prayer. Because in the place of prayer, God will open your eyes to see what is causing that problem. So Satan has what grown in knowledge as the angel of light. Are you with me? He has grown in knowledge. So he knows how to manipulate. He knows how to manipulate. He knows how to manipulate your situation. He knows that you are emotional. He knows what triggers you. He knows what words will cause you to feel a certain way. So it's very simple. Somebody could just come into your life, in your, in, in your place of work, and they could be influenced to say something that affects you. But you must be discerning enough to recognize that it is not of God. Because when Jesus told his disciples that he was supposed to go to the cross and die, he spoke the will of God. But what did Peter say? I will not let you die. What did Jesus tell him? Peter was the head of the church. But Peter spoke something that was contrary to the will of God. When you know the will of God, not even my parents can tell me otherwise. Hallelujah. I love my mom and dad. And I obey them. Not against the will of God voice of God. My obedience stops where it crosses my loyalty to God. I will keep the law of the land but I will stop when it crosses my loyalty with God. Are you getting me? That is why we are a nation. We are a don't think that you are in this land under a government. No, you are under the lordship of Jesus Christ. You see, the time will come when we will become a nation and Christians will rule over the affairs of men. But that time has not come yet. Amen? We are the forerunners 
who are going to be talking about this until the next generation understands these things, who grow in knowledge and begin to rule from the heavenlies. Begin to what? Rule from the heavenlies. Start with your home. Start with your go home. Some wonderful thing happened in our brother's life, yeah? He just took the truth that I told him and he went home and he began, he opened up his entire top floor for prayer and that same night was challenged by what? Force. By forces of darkness that were there. His eyes opened to the spiritual reality. He called me 2 a.m. in the night. Morning. So, Pastor, I, 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 I'm going through this. I said, praise the Lord. He thought he was under attack. No, he was not under attack. What had happened was his spirit man grew by receiving the knowledge. You understand? So, Satan is an angel of light. So, you receive light. So when you receive light, you saw your eyes were open to see all these things. They're threatened. Are you with me? When you begin to grow, when you grow in the spirit, when you're at home, when an argument or a disagreement comes, you know whether it's a genuine argument or is something that is stirred up by a spirit of anger. You see? Because in the spirit realm, there are spirits of anger, there are spirits of jealousy, there are spirits of fear. There are spirits of different spirits. Are you with me? These are all spirits that are hanging in the atmosphere. <coughs> and they can all be used by the prince of the power of the air at times he wants. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you might be there and he can just dispatch one spirit into your life. So if your spirit is not like a mighty fortress... There is a breach in your wall. Oh, come in. Okay? I know it's very heavy. But you must know this. You must know this. When I began to pray, there are some times I fight with... <laughs> certain creatures, certain things in the spirit. There, there are things that God takes me into battle and I begin to see them. And, and, and there, those, those can be times of intense warfare. Because that's what God has called me to do. Not everyone is called to that, okay? That's why God opened my eyes to see many things while I was very, very young. Most of you may not go through those things. You're not, most of you may not be called to those things. But you need to identify in your home, in your family, in your marriage, in your relationship, in your workplace. I address those things in tongues. Hallelujah. You're praying for something. Address it in tongues. What Satan has against you, change it in the realm of the spirit with tongues. He has given you the power and authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. Nothing will harm you. But you need to stay in the will of God. You need to stay in the purposes of God. And constantly speak life. Amen? Constantly speak life. When you expose yourself to darkness, darkness will creep in. You see? There are certain TV shows I don't watch. The moment I watch it, mm -mm, I switch it off. My wife is even more sensitive. There are things that I watch she doesn't watch. I said, please, can you watch it? No, no, I don't watch. She's, she's extra sensitive to certain things. She doesn't watch. She only watches certain things. Uh, so it's one bad word something she was saying, I don't watch this. She said, this is a nice show. Nah, I don't watch this. I don't want that to pollute my spirit. She won't watch. I'll just pray in the blood of Jesus, I'll watch. <laughs> I'm a bit stubborn like that. <laughs> Maybe God will give me her grace soon. <laughs> so she doesn't allow, doesn't allow, allow things. Oh, that's polluting to my spirit. I won't watch. So, so you need to guard, see, guard your heart with all diligence for out of which flows what the issues of life satan knows how to get to your heart he knows how your body functions 
He knows medicine more than anyone. You see, yesterday while in prayer, I gave a revelation. I said, the enemy knows how to manipulate a human gene, DNA. Okay? He knows. When we pray for healing, when we pray for healing, what we are essentially doing is we are reprogramming the body to the original state. Right? So we're praying, God, when we pray in tongues, when we declare, we're saying, God, bring it back to the original state of divine health. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When we pray in tongues, we're praying, Lord, restore things to original design. Amen. The, how, how the enemy comes, he comes to kill, steal and destroy. He just doesn't blatantly come. He, he starts with a thought. He thoughts with a pattern. And when you see those patterns following your life, you need to say, no, 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 no. That's not of God. When you wake up every day on the wrong side of the bed, you mm -mm, something is not right. One day is fine. Not the whole week. You must recognize and say, Lord, that is not right. What did I do last night before going to bed? Oh, I went with that thought. Let me change that thought. Let me pray before I sleep. Hallelujah. Let me forgive before I sleep. Let me release forgiveness before I sleep. Let me just go into prayer and read the Bible before I sleep. I watch true crime before I sleep. Of course, you're going to dream of things. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you need to understand what level you are. Because certain levels you'll open doors. Shut those doors. Get into the secret place and begin to train your spirit. Yeah? When I began training, for, for, many, for a number of years, God didn't allow me to watch TV. I didn't watch TV. I didn't read news. I didn't know what was going on in the world. All I knew was Bible and I didn't read any other books as well. For almost one or two years, I read Bible. I prayed. Every day, I would pray for minimum eight hours. That's how it was for me. Okay, when I first started, when the, when the Lord called me for every day, one year, eight hours, I'll pray in tongues. 16 hours maximum, 20. There are days I will not come out of my room for days. Because I knew what was at stake. The Lord opened my eyes and he said, Sam, Samuel, if you want to take nations, there is a price you have to pay. So I began training my spirit at the age of 23. I said, Lord, no, 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 no. If I need to take nations for Jesus, there are things I need to pay. I, 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 I need to walk in the realm of grace and glory where I can just be prepared for you, Lord. Let nothing take away my, 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 my I, all I want is you. All I want is you, Lord. I, and Lord, let my focus be on you, attention be on you. And Lord, give me the understanding to grow. That's all I desired. Amen. After that, after that two years is when I went to the Philippines and God began to train me in the, in the, in the, in the formalities of things. It took time. It took what? Time. If you're growing in the spirit now, stay there. Remain patient. I see elevation coming. I see God taking you to the next level in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I see you guys, uh, you, you are discerning. You're picking things up in the realm of the spirit. Uh, mm -mm, that's not of God. Hallelujah. When some people come into your life, you know how much you're going to share to them. Don't share your entire life history with everybody. They are not just people. They can be, they are, they are what we call monitoring spirits. Like I said, Satan does not have access to every information that God gives you. Except the information you give. <laughs> so when God gives me a vision, I will not put it on Facebook or Instagram. I will pray in tongues until that vision grows deep and takes on root and becomes a tree. Amen? When the Lord gave me the vision for business, I didn't tell anyone for one year. My wife and I, we didn't tell anyone for one year until we put the roots and then we, dis we declared. So there are some projects I'm doing now I've not declared yet. You will hear of them next year. <laughs> You'll hear of them next year. You see, I've not declared them yet. Why? Because I am allowing that to take root. 
even Jesus was hidden. Are you with me? Because the moment the Son of Man came into this world, Satan, what did he do? He wanted to kill him. They had to go hide where? In Egypt. Moses was born. What happened? They hid Moses. They what? They hid him. They put him and they hid him. And then God gave them the, uh, the, 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 the wisdom to put him there in the river Nile. And now out of the water he was taken prophetically. Hallelujah. When you walk with God, when the enemy is attacking and creating havoc all around you, you will be kept safe in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When everything is going around you wrong and you say, Lord, what is this? But now God has brought you here so that you can grow in the things of God. You can be aware of what's happening in the realm of the spirit. You will grow in discernment. That is discernment. Say this to me. I turn to your neighbor and say, I will grow in discernment. Amen. Hallelujah. You will test every spirit. Hallelujah. When you pray and you grow in the spirit, you will test spirit. Amen. How will you know? How can you test spirit without knowing scripture? You can't. Amen. You need to grow for yourself. Now, at least now you have a glimpse of truth because I have taught you now. It's there in your spirit. So if you have an encounter and you, you receive, so not everything that you hear in your spirit is from God, okay? Okay? You have to test it. You have to test it and test it and test it. And then initial days you might fast and pray. You might spend a lot of time reading the Bible. Then what? You grow and grow and grow. Your prophetic edge begins to get sharper. When it becomes very sharp, you won't need to spend hours in prayer to know the answer. God will speak directly to you. Amen? But until you get to that place, train yourself to hear the voice of... See, hearing the voice of God is the most easy thing. I don't know why people have courses and all that. Of course, step one, two, three, hear the voice of God. <laughs> Listen, just read the Bible every day and pray in tongues for half an hour at least every day. I'm telling you, within... 15 days, you will hear the voice of God. Okay, I'm talking that to someone who has not heard the voice of God before at all. 15 days, consistently do this. I'm telling you. It may even be 5 days, 10 days. I don't know how consistent. You, you begin to be consistent and open your spirit and say, Lord, I want to hear your voice. I'm telling you, it's so easy. It's not hard at all. It's very easy to hear the voice of God. Amen? We overcomplicate things. Just stay in the Bible. Stay in the word, switch off TV, no newspaper, no extra things. Control yourself from all temptations. Stay there. <laughs> God will speak to you. Yeah? God will begin to speak to you, speak to you, speak to you. And you will train yourself. You remain there for one more month, your prophetic will grow. You remain there for six months, we will not recognize you anymore. Amen. I think that's enough for today. I have much to share, but I will stop here today. <laughs> you know, we could stay here every day, seven days a week, and I will still have so much to share. There's so much, there's so much that God wants to share to the body of Christ. That we have turned church into a place we want to get encouraged. Encouragement is good. But we need more than encouragement. Encouragement will only get you a certain distance. What will set you free is the truth. Amen? That's my belief. That's the Bible. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. We need more people talking truth in churches. They are talking truth. But imagine this. Every one of you here casting out demons. How many of you want to do that? Okay. The day will come. Don't do it yet. Let's rise to our feet. Remember, Satan knows, he has knowledge, correct? So if you lack knowledge and you're facing someone who has more knowledge than you, you're in trouble. 
You understand? You come against him, you pray. The next moment there is problems in your life. How are you going to handle it? You just give up and go. You will not know how to. So, so, so there are times that we need to stay in prayer and grow and grow and grow. And there are times that God will say, go to war. You know what time is it for me now? War. God said, go to war. Which means I'm, I'm now coming out with, with every weapon that God has given me. You with me? Which means if I see even a tiny demon at work in your life is in trouble. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because now my, my spirit has been charged to, 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 to dethrone the powers in this area. I'm not coming here to just encourage you. I'm coming here to raise an army. So that's why I want to declare in the presence of you and in the presence of God and in the presence of every principality and power that God has sent me as a prophet to this nation at such a time as this to dethrone, to, to destroy, to uproot, to plant and to build. Amen. God said to Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, I have called you to what? To destroy and to uproot, to build and to plant. Hallelujah. So these are the things that we need to do as a church. We need to uproot and destroy first then we need to build and we need to plant what do we uproot and destroy evil and thoughts and knowledge that the enemy has in the in the air listen this suburb is in this situation because the powers decided so if you agree with them <laughs> You with me? So there are there are certain ways. So so oh, 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 your businesses don't do well in this location. Who said so? Who decided that? Are you with me? Oh oh, domestic violence is 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 is, is too much in this. Who who is causing that? So the government can do only a certain degree of damage control. It is the church that is supposed to stand as a prophetic voice and dethrone those powers and declare righteousness over a nation. A nation is ruled by what? Righteousness. So we say, oh, I wish we had a Christian president. It requires more than a Christian pr prime minister. It requires a nation of kings and priests who declare prophetically over a nation. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> It requires you to prophesy over your nation, over your leaders. No, the leaders are not the answers to us. Politicians are not the answer for our nation. Are you with me? What is the answer? A nation and a kingdom of kings and priests who prophesy over a nation. Hallelujah. That's why I've been called to disciple. I told you, three months from now, God is going to bring a major shift to this. I don't know what. I heard three months. In the month of end of January, I saw a major shift happening. I prophesied this over our church and over Baronia in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we are at war. I'm at war. I'm walking towards what God has shown. God has shown me things that have been affecting people. And I'm telling you, deliverance will happen. Things will begin to happen. We already saw, started seeing deliverance. God setting people free. If you're in this place, God will set you free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Demons will have to leave. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. As I be a man of God, every power, every principality that has been discharged from hell to rule over the city, over this place, over your uh, the affairs of your life, I come against them. I dethrone them in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Everything that has been Harassing your life uh, will not harass you anymore in the name of Jesus. Uh, I decree and I declare you are set free. Uh, you are going to the next level. You are set free. Uh, you are going to the next level. Everything that has been hindering your advancement, uh, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I stand as a prophet over your life uh, and I decree and you declare your visa is coming this year. Your marriage is coming this year. Everything the enemy has stopped over your life, uh, I decree and I declare your. Your house, your breakthrough is coming in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it. 
Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. The entrance of your word brings light, O oh Lord. Thank you for your word today. We submit, we surrender. Lord, thank you for enlightening your saints. Opening the eyes of our heart and of our understanding, O oh Lord. We decree and we declare freedom in the atmosphere. The Bible says, the anointing breaks yoke. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and there is freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is liberty. Can somebody shout freedom? Can yeah. somebody shout liberty? liberty? The spirit of liberty has been released into your homes. Uh, when you face certain things, go into that atmosphere of your, of your family home and you declare, Lord, I decree and declare liberty. I decree and declare freedom. Now let's just stretch forth our hands towards this suburb and begin to pray, Lord, we decree and declare spirit of freedom, a spirit of liberty over Boronia, over the surrounding suburbs. Lord, as a kingdom, as a nation of rulers and kings and priests, we decree the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of righteousness established in this, bro in this location, oh Lord. No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, Lord, raise us up, oh Lord, to be a kingdom of kings and priests, a nation, oh Lord, of prophets, a nation, Lord, of apostles, who will speak over nations in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare freedom. Go and prosper. Go and multiply. Go and do what God has called you to do. I command, I, 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 I commission everyone in this church to go and prosper and do what God has called you to do. I decree and I declare this week blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.